this video is going to be all about seven things to know or to think about if you are wanting to write and eventually launch and publish a book. First thing is that your financial input should be equivalent, should be equal or more to the ROI, your return on investment that you're expecting. It is so easy, so easy to dump thousands of dollars into a book that isn't even published yet. And the, I, I will absolutely attest to that. I've, I've spent so much money on editing books and materials, on webinars, on conferences, on events, on all these kinds of different things. Is it worth it? I don't know. It depends on what you value. But I would say that as easy, if you have the capital, you have the funds and you have the means to dump a bunch of money into a book, I would seriously think about, are you going to make that back in sales? Whether it's book sales or if you're an entrepreneur or business owner and you write a book, whether that leads to client sales, are you going to make that back in speaking opportunity or spe speaking opportunities or other marketing efforts out there that make sense for your target audience and your book. It is so easy to dump a lot of money into a book that isn't even made yet. So seriously think about, are you willing or are you able to make this back? Does it make sense to dump this much money into a book? If it's a fiction book, I would probably say no. I would say to maybe keep your capital investment a little on the leaner side and lean more into time if you can. Beta groups, writing groups, self-editing as much as you can. There's, there's all kinds of ways to do it. It really just boils down to what you value and what you're wanting to get out of it, what you're wanting to provide for people. So that's probably the first thing is that your financial input should be equal to or less than whatever your anticipated ROI is. Number two is to be aware of the different kinds of marketing. Marketing, when we're talking about marketing a book, marketing a brand, marketing a business, it is a giant umbrella with lots of different little columns underneath it. There's sales. You're trying to sell a service. You're trying to sell a product and you're wanting to market that service or product. The other kind that you have is public relations. You are hiring a publicist to get you more media attention. This has to do with radio shows. This has to do with morning shows, TV appearances, magazine placements. This has to do with very traditional type of media and I believe that's called earned media because it's something that you have to pitch to a lot that's one of the caveats of of hiring a publicist is that yeah when you get it it can be really cool it can do a lot for you know boosting your brand identity and awareness and credibility and all those things does that translate into whatever the thing is that you're wanting more book sales more attention on your business I don't know really just kind of depends what kind of niche you're in what kind of audience that you have but a lot of it is going to be earned media where you're constantly pitching to people or you hire someone to pitch to all of their different media contacts in hopes of getting a placement. So none of it's guaranteed, um, but you do get a lot of uh, traditional eyes, eyes and ears and attention on you. There's digital advertising. This is probably one of the most popular forms of marketing for authors. Advertising is a very easy way to give money to something and know that you're going to get another thing out of it. Does that translate into sales? Does that translate into a cult following? I don't know. It depends on your efforts, your strategy, your niche, your audience. I really, there's no, the thing with marketing is there's no straightforward answer. You have to know who your audience is, your content, what's going to resonate with the right person and the best way to communicate that information. But advertising is really attractive because you for sure are getting placement somewhere. It could be an Amazon ad. It could be a YouTube ad. It could be a Google ad. It could be text. It could be video. It could be photo. It just kind of depends. You also have digital marketing and this has a lot to do with social media. This has a lot to do with search engine optimization. This has a lot to do with utilizing digital channels to increase awareness, spread word of mouth, get more eyes and ears on you. And there's also branding and brand identity. And that's also a big part of marketing. And in my mind, I think of brand identity as a controlled perception. How do you want people to think about you? What do you want people to associate with you? How do you want people to interpret you? Where do you want people to look or see or think about when they see your brand name or you or your face or your colors or a certain word, right? When you think of vulnerability. You might think of Brene Brown. When you think of sparking joy, you might think of that one woman who wrote that book whose name escapes me at this exact moment who wrote about the power of being clean and tidy. <laughs> so those are a lot of the different facets and areas of marketing. There's tons of other little bits and pieces that can bump off of that, but those are just some of the major ones. So when you say that you want marketing support, know what kind of marketing support you want or the kind that you suspect that you need. If you're wanting specific results, if you're wanting specific support, with something, it might not hurt to do a little bit of research, see what's out there and get a feel for the other kinds of, you know, avenues and efforts within the marketing umbrella that makes sense for you. And speaking of marketing and branding, the third point is you want to make sure that you have a clear book to brand pipeline. You could be fiction, you could be nonfiction. I'm a nonfiction girly. I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with nonfiction books. So that's kind of where my heart is. But with any book that you have, you're going to get an influx of attention on a new book that's going to come back to you. That's going to come back to the author. They're going to 
read your book, think, wow, this is really valuable, they're gonna flip over to your bio section in the book, be like, oh, where can I find more information on this person? They're gonna find you. What do you want them to see? Is there something else you want them to buy? Is there a service you want them to invest in? Is there a community you want them to tap into? Is there a Substack newsletter that you want them to subscribe to? What do you want your call to action to be? based on your book. Your book is a marketing tool. There are lots of different kinds of marketing tools out there. It should not be your book with your brand and everything else orbiting around it. Your book is not the sun in the solar system, I promise you. Your brand is the sun within the solar system with your book and all these other things orbiting around it. Your brand's in the middle, your books, your speaking opportunities, all these cool things are gonna be orbiting around it because it all leads to your brand and your brand leads to you. It leads to your business, it leads to your thought leadership. Whatever kind of system you have going on, whatever you want to build for yourself, you want there to be a book to brand pipeline. With anything that you lead them to, you want there to be a clear call to action. Number four, know who your target readership is, your target audience, and where they're at. If you're not sure where to start, if you're not sure what to invest in, if you're not sure what kind of marketing you need or support you need to hire, consider the kind of book that you want to write. Who's the audience that you're wanting to attract with that book or reach with that book? If you're an entrepreneur, this might already be in place for you and you're writing a book as a lead magnet to attract in more clients. If you're a fiction writer, you might write a book, research some comp titles on Amazon to see what other books out there are similar to yours in content, audience, or style, and then identify your target audience through that. Think about who your target audience is and where they like to get their information and how they like to hear that information as well. If you want to take it a step further, that informs your content and your con in your, your content marketing strategy. Books being one of those forms of content. Number five is to be prepared to put in some of the effort or some of the work when it comes to marketing. You can hire some stuff out, some stuff it's really hard for people to do on your behalf like nurturing relationships right if you want to get more reviews if you want to get an endorsement if you know someone who can help you get speaking opportunities or podcast placements or something that's going to be really awkward coming from like a virtual assistant or something like that unless they're like typing it under your name or something but some of the stuff you're you're going to have to do like self promotion people really like having a personal connection to a brand whether big medium or small and one of the things that really helps with that is being able to put a face to the experience or put a personality to the experience. KFC, you got an old guy on a bucket of chicken and it works. People see the beard and they think, oh, fried chicken. People have an association with brands, right? It's a controlled perception. So when it comes to self-promotion, when it comes to relationship building, when it comes, sometimes when it comes to fulfilling on promises, depending on what it is, that's stuff that you're going to want to show up for. It's very common to have book bonuses, right? Let's say that you launch a book, you publish a book, you release it out into the world that's available for purchase. A lot of times people, you know, will say on their website on like a separate book tab or book page or something like buy a copy of my book, get ABC buy five copies of my book, get A, B, C, and D. And let's say one of those bonuses that you offer is like an ask me anything or like a coffee chat or a fireside Q&A or something like that. That's something that you're going to have to fulfill on. Do you have the time for that? Do you have the bandwidth for that? Are you able to prepare for something like that? Are you able to follow up after those kinds of experiences? Are you able to provide value in those kinds of environments? You can outsource a lot of stuff, but when it comes to the brand image, when it comes to the experience, that's something that is going to be a big part of, of you showing up and facilitating those conversations or providing that kind of experience. It's like you buy a ticket to go to an Ed Sheeran concert, but it's the cover band that does it instead of Ed Sheeran himself. It's kind of a disappointment, sort of makes it seem a little bit less worth it, and then people decide that they don't like you as much anymore and you don't want that. Number six, make sure that your expectations align with your budget. I love a person who's got big ambitions and they want to go for the gold and they're willing to put a plan in place for it and take actionable steps to get to that goal. But what's frustrating is when someone says, I want to hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list, but they have a budget of like five grand. It is expensive, dude, to get to get that kind of a title. It's easily a six figure investment. Are you willing to pay for a $100,000 New York Times campaign that may or may not work out? Are you willing to pay $65,000 to get a guaranteed slot on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list or something? That's something that I've seen people do. I've seen people dish out five-figure checks to get on these bestseller lists or, you know, I've, I've heard of people dishing out six-figure checks to get on these bestsellers. Like, it's great to have big goals, big ambitions. Are you willing to pay for it? Are you willing to invest the time to learn about it yourself? Are you willing to do what it takes in order to, to reach that goal? Whatever it is for you. If it's hitting Amazon bestseller, 
bestseller, $5,000, you don't need $5,000 to hit Amazon bestseller. But you wanna make sure that your expectations are not only reasonable for where you currently at based on your reputation, based on what you've built for yourself, if you're a pro, if you're starting out, whatever kind of niche you're in, the kind of audience that you have, there's all kinds of facts and figures that determine you know, what's worth pursuing and what isn't, what's realistic, what's not, what budget matches that ambition and, and whatnot. You just wanna make make sure that everything is kind of in sync because if you start hiring out support and then you complain about their price tag for a really big goal, that's something that you're going to need to get a little bit clear on, do a little bit more research around. It is totally fine to do a little bit of extra research. I absolutely encourage it. If you want to hire someone to help you launch a book, if you want to hire someone to help you get more reviews, you should totally do it. But to kind of help make sure that you're thinking about it the right way, do a little bit of extra research and see what kinds of averages are out there. Average investment, average ROI, return on investment, average, whatever. What kind of experience can I expect? Are guarantees typical with that kind of thing? These are a lot of business decisions that you're making around your book. Books are a business. Money is involved. Strategies are involved. Investments are involved, whether that be time, capital, whatever. And it never, ever hurts to educate yourself or do a little bit of research to make sure that you're making the best hiring decision if you decide to outsource some of that help. And number seven is, do you want people to look at your book first or do you want people to look at your brand first? This has to do with a book to brand pipeline. This has to do with figuring out or identifying how a book fits in with your brand strategy. Your brand Brand could be your image as an author. If you want to put all of your eggs in the book basket and the author basket and 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 build up your reputation as a successful franchise author like Stephen King or James Patterson or something, that's totally great. If you are an entrepreneur or a business person and you want to write a book and you want to use that book as a marketing tool to establish more credibility, get speaking placements, attract more clients, raise your prices, try something new, whatever the case may be, that's really great. So my question to you is, do you want people to look at your book first or your brand first? People are going to know that both of them exist, but where do you want them to look first and how do you want them to follow the breadcrumbs from A to B, from book to brand or from brand to book? If you're starting out, it might make, depending on your niche, depending on kind of what you got going on, if you're just starting out, it might not hurt to start with a book first, see what kind of interest you get going. And if you see that it's something that, you know, might be worth building off of, you could build a brand around that because then you know it works because then you know that people are already aware about it. They already like, know, and trust you because you gave them all this value in a book. Something like that is definitely not out of the question. So those are seven things that you should really keep in mind if you're wanting to eventually launch a book or if you're getting ready to launch a book. Those are all really, and the earlier that, you, you know, the earlier on in your journey that you catch this video, the better. Because that was a lot of information, I want to kind of wrap everything up in three main takeaways that just kind of broadly summarizes this whole video. First one, hard, hard pill for some people to swallow. You are not entitled to success just because you wrote a book. So do millions of other people. Thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of books get published every year. Not every single one of them is famous. Not every single one of them is well-known or a millionaire. And I'm gonna break a huge myth for you, which is that you're not gonna get rich off book sales unless you are Brene Brown, your name is Colleen Hoover. Those are the exceptions. A book is a great ego boost. It's a great credibility boost. You can do a lot with a book. You, it's a it's a big label maker. You can say you're an author, a best-selling author, whatever. But because you wrote it and you beat the odds because you wrote it doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically granted the full red carpet experience. You want to make sure that you are setting goals and objectives for yourself and defining what your version of success looks like so that you can look back on everything and feel like it was worth it. Number two, you are investing in a short pipeline that leads to a bigger one. This is the book to brand pipeline. A book is only new for one year in the eyes of the industry. It's called a front list title. When a book is 12 months or older, it shifts from, from a front list to a back list title. And back list title just means that it's just not new anymore. That's all that means. So in the eyes of the industry, if a book is new for a year and you are an entrepreneur or you're a brand or you have a business or something, new business lasts for eight and a half years on average. So you got book for one year or you got business for eight and a half years. I would sink more of my eggs into the brand basket because like I said, you're not gonna make money off of book sales. PR and media attention might not help with those book sales. It really depends because the industry as a whole is extremely subjective, but you have your business and business always done well. We live in a very capitalistic society here in the Western hemisphere in the United States. So, you know, chances of your business making more money is a lot greater than maybe your book making money. So 
why not have that book funnel into your business? Have a pipeline, right? If people read it and they like it, where do you want it to go? If you're a fiction author, maybe you make money by doing book coaching. If you're a fiction author, maybe you make money doing workshops or lectures. Maybe you have a paid community. I don't know. It's going to look different for everyone. But you want to make sure that you're not losing sight of the bigger picture because you have this shiny new book in front of you. And then number three, I kind of already said number three, but your 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 brand is going to last a lot longer than your book. That's all I have. Um, I really hope that this was enlightening. I hope it challenged some of your beliefs. I hope it opened you up to some new perspectives. I hope it maybe validated some of the things that you were feeling or, you know, answered some of the questions that you have. So if this helped, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, by doing that, you are recommending the video to other people who might also benefit from it. If you want other people to know about it, that's a really great way to support the channel. So that's all I have. I'll see you in the next video take care until then also oh my god um please sign up for my patreon i just recently started one i i mentioned that in the last video but just in case you didn't catch it i started a patreon it's only one tier and it's a dollar a month and i'm gonna be doing i'm not gonna be making more content but i am going to be creating a more interactive community i want you to feel like you can pick my brain if you want ask questions if you want there's going to be live streams i want to bring in guests and people to talk on subjects that i'm less of an expert in i want there to be ask me anything i want there to be q and a's there's going to be behind the scenes stuff there's there's going to be strategies and tips and resources and all, and all, and all kinds of things that I share because I really want to help you out. Authorpreneurship is my jam. So if that sounds like something that you'd kind of like to poke your head into, see what's going on, definitely consider joining. Otherwise, that's all I have for this video. Take care until then and I'll see you next time. Bye.